OpenAI and AMD took all the headlines on Monday as they went public with their six gigawatt partnership. But there's a little clue at the end of this interview with AMD CEO and OpenAI's co-founder that suggests all may not be as it seems. OpenAI could very well own 10% or have a 10% stake in AMD. Would you then use that to weigh in on how the company is managed or what, what power does that give you? Oh, I think of it from a technology first perspective, right? Because we're really here to build technology to bring this this AI to the world in a positive way. And I think that we're already actually sort of key stakeholders uh, to what AMD is creating, right? That we've been partnering on the software uh, perspective. I think Lisa is doing an incredible job. I think that this this company would not be what it is without her. This deal would not have been possible without her leadership. Um, but I think that what we're just excited about is really continuing this compute partnership and, and bringing compute to, to where it needs to go. Lisa, I, I have to ask, because again, you say this is what you do. You guys can manufacture enough of these chips to reach all of your partners and all of the deals that you have outside of OpenAI. You know, Semaphore had a report saying that Intel was in early talks with AMD, where AMD would use Intel's foundry business manufacturing arm here in the United States to help churn out some of your chips. Can you give me any indication that that is a possibility in any way, shape or form? Well, Liz, and if I can just make a comment on the question you asked, Greg, look, um, I think what is so special about this deal is we both want success for each other. And you know, that is a, a wonderful thing. Like I want OpenAI to be wildly successful and have their services deployed as far as possible because that generates demand for chips. And OpenAI wants our technology to be as great as it can be because they get more compute and they also get to share in some of our um, you know joint upside. So I think it's a great deal to show what two companies can do in aligning incentives overall. And then Liz, to your question about manufacturing and capability, you know, first I wanna say, look, this administration has been incredibly focused on how do we get more AI capability in the United States, more AI compute capability, more power, more manufacturing. And we are entirely supportive of that. I mean, this is exactly the right thing for us to do. We look at all ways of getting more manufacturing capacity, as I said earlier, I think we have plenty. So we're gonna supply everything that Greg wants and we have plenty for all of our um, other large customers as well. But we're constantly looking at how we expand manufacturing capability. We're right now building um, a significant amount in Arizona and we're gonna continue uh, to ramp that with TSMC. And we'll always consider options, but the key here is ensuring that we have a very flexible supply chain mm. that can deliver all of the AI compute that the industry needs. Well, it's a I would say there's only Go ahead. Oh, uh, there's only one thing I disagree with with what Lisa said, which okay. is that I, I think that supplying all of the compute that OpenAI needs is uh, is is too tall of an order. Uh, that that we just need more. I think it is, and it's not even just about OpenAI. It's really about where we see the world going. Is I think that we're almost heading this compute scarcity. Like as these models get better, as they increase the productivity of everyone, solve hard problems, that we're just going to find that you get more from more AI. And so a lot of what we think about is how do we increase the supply chain? And I think that Lisa is uh, doing an incredible job to do that. Um, but I think that, that the demand is going to far outstrip anyone's ability to keep mm. up with it. We continue to watch actually, it. I, I, Go ahead, Lisa. That's actually a good problem to have, Greg. So <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, more demand, less supply. Listen, if you have to choose, that's the side you want to be on. It did get a little bit fruity towards the end of that clip. We'll come back to that in just a moment. But first, Hans, what do you make of the deal between the two companies? Are you surprised to see this kind of deal going live? And how bullish does this make you on the future of AMD? Also, an interesting part of the deal is that this does give OpenAI the right to buy up to 10% of AMD for literally one cent on the dollar. Hans, this is a big deal. What do you make of it all? Well, yes, this certainly is somewhat of a surprising deal, especially the structure of it. And let's dig into the actual numbers. And so what AMD is actually offering OpenAI here is the ability to purchase 160 million shares for one cent each, which means they would have to pay $1.6 million to acquire roughly 10% 
of AMD, but there are a number of conditions to that deal. The first of which is that obviously OpenAI has to actually purchase these chips from AMD and get them deployed. And that should generate roughly $90 billion worth of revenue for AMD. And then the other milestone that's included here is that AMD's stock price needs to pass $600 per share, which is roughly a 4X increase over the price that AMD was trading at before this whole deal went down. And then if you do the math of 160 million shares shares being worth at least $600 each per share, then what you see is that the value of the stock that AMD would be selling to OpenAI in this case would be worth at least $96 billion. And so essentially OpenAI would be getting these chips for free from AMD. So essentially OpenAI would be getting all of these $90 billion worth of chips from AMD for free plus a little bit. So at a surface level, it does seem like this deal is quite crazy. It's definitely unorthodox and it's definitely creative. But let's step back and ask the question, why is the deal structured in this way? And the first answer to that question is that this deal really is set up to be a win-win both for OpenAI and for AMD. And if we reflect on the deal that OpenAI just did with NVIDIA, we also see that they secured roughly $100 billion worth of commitment from NVIDIA, although NVIDIA is committing to pay that to them in cash versus in equity. And from OpenAI's perspective, these infusions of assets into their company is something that's going to be completely necessary for them in order to secure all of the financing that is going to be required in order to build out these hundreds of billions of dollars worth of data centers here over the next five years. Unfortunately, unlike Google, OpenAI doesn't have a cash printer that just spits out billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of free cash flow every year. Now, yes, they do actually have a great business. They are compounding the growth of their users and their revenue at an extremely fast pace. They're actually on track to reach a $100 billion ARR run rate much, much faster than Google or Meta ever did. And so there is a good core business here for OpenAI, but they're trying to build out a lot of this infrastructure to continue to expand these products and services well ahead of the revenue that they're actually going to generate from them. So that creates a financing challenge for them where they actually need some collateral in order to be out in order to be able to go out and raise the debt that they will use to fund these build outs. And so that's why you see these creative deal structures by both NVIDIA and AMD in order to help facilitate these data center build outs. And as I said, this is hopefully a win win deal structure for both OpenAI and AMD. So let's dig into that a little more. What is it that OpenAI actually gets out of this deal? Well, in addition to the asset that they would be able to purchase in the form of AMD stock at a very discounted value, this also helps them to diversify their supply chain away from relying solely on NVIDIA and NVIDIA's chips to power their operations and their products and services. So this helps to give them a little bit of insurance when it comes to chips and also hopefully a little bit of pricing power as they continue to negotiate purchases with NVIDIA in the future. And then somewhat surprisingly, what we're actually seeing is that OpenAI expects these AMD MI400 chips to be better in a number of inference workloads in their business than NVIDIA chips. Now that doesn't mean that these AMD chips can do everything that the NVIDIA chips can do as well as the NVIDIA chips can do them, but there are pockets of the business where this actually makes a lot of sense from an architecture perspective and the software and hardware are completely capable of providing tons of value for OpenAI. Furthermore, as one of AMD's big anchor customers for these AI data center systems, OpenAI actually gets a lot of say in how the hardware and the software gets developed. So this helps to ensure that these chips actually work well for their use cases. And so it provides them with critical experience in developing the hardware and the software for these systems that they can also build on as they pursue their own in-house chip projects as well, which is something that they're planning to do with Broadcom. And from AMD's perspective, this is obviously a win as well. And, and the market is certainly excited about it, as you can see from the reaction that we've had in the stock since Monday. And the biggest takeaway is that this is just a validation that AMD is on the right track with their instinct line of data center AI systems in order to be able to capture a significant share of this large and growing market for AI inference. 
And as Greg Brockman alluded to, OpenAI actually has some of the biggest and hardest inference workload challenges in the business. And so partnering with OpenAI in this way actually puts a lot of engineering and developer attention onto Rockham, which is AMD's alternative to CUDA and their hardware, and really helps to build out the functionality of their Instinct line to be able to cover more and more use cases and then offer a more and more attractive alternative to NVIDIA chips for these hyperscale companies. And lastly, AMD would be happy to dilute its shareholders by roughly 10% if OpenAI is able to meet all of these milestones because it means that AMD will have increased their market cap by, by almost 4x to roughly $1 trillion at the very least and potentially more. So overall, I think this is a very interesting and exciting deal. I think this creative deal structure is something that we're probably going to see more of moving forward in order for these startup companies to try to compete with the likes of Google who are building out infrastructure just hand over fist. And then as far as this competition between AMD and NVIDIA is concerned, it is exciting to see them be able to gain some traction and find a good niche within this large and growing market where they can succeed. I do think there's a lot of execution risk here though for both OpenAI and for AMD. From OpenAI's perspective, there's a lot of difficult and complex things that they have to accomplish here. You know, building out six gigawatts worth of data centers all by itself is quite the challenge. But then when you factor in trying to secure the energy that's gonna be necessary to power those data centers, and acquiring all of the funding that's necessary to secure all of those things, it is quite the tall order. And then from AMD's perspective, it does seem like the Instinct line of chips are getting more and more competitive with NVIDIA's offerings, but that's only a small component of what it's going to take to compete with NVIDIA overall, which is much more than just a chip company. They really are an end-to-end -end AI infrastructure and computing ecosystem company and have been for some time. You know, one way to think of this is that the NVIDIA and CUDA software software and hardware ecosystem is almost like the iOS ecosystem of today that's just very robust. You know, it has so much mindshare of the developer community. There's tight integration, high level abstractions that make it really easy for anyone to come in and start building there. But in this analogy, Rockham today is not like Android competing directly with iOS. Rockham just isn't anywhere near as mature as Android today. So it would be more like the Android ecosystem of seven or eight years ago trying to compete with the iOS ecosystem of today. And that said, you know, there really are a number of players in the market who want to have alternatives for NVIDIA. And so there is a strong push to help develop Rockham into a much more mature competitor to CUDA. But this is something that's just going to take time. And so that's one of the background challenges that's facing AMD right now. But fortunately for them, the inference workloads that they are looking at are a little bit easier to actually facilitate on Rockham than doing massive training runs. And that's why you see this deal unfolding the way it does and why OpenAI is primarily focused on using AMD chips for inference workloads only. So as I said, Overall, I am very excited about this deal. I do think that it provides a lot of upside, both for AMD and for OpenAI. But with that said, there is a lot of risk ahead, so this is definitely not a done deal. Both OpenAI and AMD have their respective outs, and there are many ways that this is going to be an uphill battle. But with that said, this demand for inference compute really is going to far exceed the vast majority of investors' expectations. And so even if there are some stumbles along the way, I think there's a lot of opportunity for AMD and OpenAI to succeed just by capturing even a small market share of this huge and growing use case. So at the end of that clip, AMD's CEO, Lisa Su, did say, we're going to supply everything Greg wants. Then Greg, the co-founder of OpenAI, replied saying that all of the compute that OpenAI needs is too tall of an order for AMD. I thought that was an interesting thing to be saying on the same day of an announcement of a big partnership with AMD. So Hans, what do you think Greg meant by this? Do you think this is suggesting potentially any early weaknesses in this partnership or is this just signal as to how ridiculously large the GPU requirements are for OpenAI and there's no way AMD could supply that with also considerations that there may be some preferences towards NVIDIA GPUs here. Well, that certainly was an interesting exchange there between Lisa and Greg towards the end of the interview. And my take on it is that it boils down to just a difference in context. 
When Lisa said that they had the capability to provide everything that OpenAI wanted as far as compute, she was really thinking within the structure of the deal that they are announcing for this six gigawatts. And so she has a high level of confidence in AMD's ability to secure their supply chain and do everything that's necessary to be able to make six gigawatts worth of AMD chips available to OpenAI in the coming years. But then from Greg's perspective, when he heard her say that AMD could provide all of the compute that AMD wanted, he's really thinking about the actual much larger amount of compute that OpenAI is trying to build out over the next three, five, and even 10 years. And from that perspective, he is correct. AMD is just not in a position to be able to supply 100% of the compute that, a that OpenAI would like to have. And part of that goes back to the inference versus training things that we talked about earlier. As it stands today, AMD hasn't proven that they can facilitate training these huge models the way that the NVIDIA ecosystem has. And every one of the gigawatt plus scale training data centers that's being built right now, whether that's by Microsoft, whether that's by Oracle, whether that's by XAI, whether that's by OpenAI with Stargate, all of these things rely exclusively on NVIDIA's systems because NVIDIA is just far and away the best solution in the market for that specific problem. Now, ultimately, that training market is going to be a smaller market than the inference market overall. So AMD has plenty of room to succeed wildly as a company if they can take a significant share of that inference market, which is exactly how Lisa Sue is trying to position the company moving forward. And this was the point that Liz was making there as the interview was wrapping up, that if Greg is right, we're still really just at the very beginning of a major AI super cycle and the demand for inference build out is going to far exceed expectations, which puts people like Lisa in a great position to have more future customers than she can even shake a stick at, which puts her in a position to potentially have customers knocking down her door to get more and more chips from them. Before we wrap, I have to say a huge thank you to my co-host, David. Besides being a great co-host with a great accent, David has been one of the key figures behind the scenes helping me to grow this channel from 1,000 to over 16,000 subscribers and to put out regular shows that reach millions of views every year. When he's not moonlighting with me, he usually works with businesses who want to leverage YouTube to grow their online presence, and he's looking to take on more. If you want to get more clients and more brand awareness for your business using YouTube, I definitely recommend him. You can book a free call with him using the link in the description below.